welcome back to the channel, it's Lauren. Today is Scent Sunday, so I am so excited to get into this video. I am finally trying a brand that you guys have requested, but also I have been wanting to try from like the beginning, since I started getting in and totally going down the rabbit hole that is the fragrance community on YouTube, I have wanted to try Imaginary Authors, and today I am sampling every single one of these perfumes. I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts. I bought two of these sample packs um, recently. They shipped out so fast. I'm telling you, I made my order, I don't know, three days ago, four days ago, and they got here like within two days. Like, <laughs> it was amazing. I was not expecting that. But these are their short story collections where you can pick eight samples that you wanna try out and get to sample them and see if you wanna buy the full bottle. Um, and I ended up sampling all 16. I bought two of these and it's so cute. I mean, look at how cute this is. It looks like a little book. And the whole reason that is, is because all of the imaginary authors' perfumes are based off of like little tiny stories. There's kind of like this whole imagined, envisioned world in which this perfume exists and uh, it has a little story on it when you go to the website so I just love that I think that that's like the whole thing that's so fun about scent is that it does have like this feeling like it evokes feelings and memories and I love that like how many of us when we're describing perfumes are like it's kind of like a cold dark night a witch is after you and you're running away but you're sprinkling salt after you so you kind of get a little bit of that salt smell and you're almost slipping on the ice and you can smell the cold breeze like and that's like what the perfume smells like and that's what it makes you think of like <laughs> Anyone else? No? Just me? Okay. Obviously not though, right? Because this perfume brand exists. So I have all my little samples here. I'm so excited to go through. I have smelled them before because I've mentioned this in a past video. I cannot just do first impressions. I can't. I just know it wouldn't be as good for you guys because I love it. I hate it. I'm this. I'm that. And then I like get, I get a little time sometimes to think and I'm like, oh, okay. I like that. But I went through with Sam, my husband. We've already smelled all of them. It was such a fun time. I definitely think that specifically Imaginary Authors and their sample pack is a great like activity to do with friends. I think that is so fun. If you've never done that, you guys, I'm making this intro way too long, but if you've never done that, if you've never had like a scent party with your friends, even if they're not as into fragrance as you, get a little sample pack. May I suggest this one because it's really fun and it has like, you know, the whole story and all that. You can really make it a fun thing and you can smell them together and, you know, describe them, talk about them. It's very fun. I have literally done it with my friends and it was a great time. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at, I think, is that I've already smelled all of these fragrances so I kind of have an idea Sam and I went through and kind of had our thoughts so I'm excited to re-smell them today I'm gonna try to keep it short because again 16 fragrances to go off of. I'm gonna be reading the notes off of the website because with every single one of these perfume, there's also not only a story, but an imaginary note that is in the fragrance. So something that isn't actually like an accord or like an actual note, but something that's kind of like the smell of witch's breath or something, which is not an actual smell, but you know, would be a part of the description of the notes type thing. Um, I don't know why I'm obsessed with witches in this video. <laughs> but anyway, let's just get into it. I'm so excited. I definitely have a few bottles on my list to purchase. I'm definitely gonna tell you which ones I like the most. I wanna know if you've tried any of these, which ones your favorites are, and let's just get into it. Yeah, I'm gonna scoot over, but all my notes are coming from there, not Fragrantica, because they don't have that imaginary note usually, and I think it's more fun to go off the website. You know, I thought about like the order I'm gonna do it. It is pretty random, but I thought I would start off with one of the ones I was most excited to smell, and one that I think is absolutely delicious and amazing. Oh, I love this scent. This is Yesterday Haze. I knew I wanted to smell this because it it is fig. I am obsessed with fig. I love a fig scent and that's what this is. This has notes of fig, iris, cream, tonka, tree bark, walnut bitters, and orchard dust. Yes, I smell the dust. <laughs> I, I get that. It's kind of this dry woodiness at the end that I definitely can, can see that, but it does have this creaminess to it. You obviously get that fig. I feel like this is a really nice in between fig. I feel like fig can go one of two ways. It can be very creamy, very almost syrupy, sweet, like gourmandy, it just goes that way. Or fig can be very like green, like fig leaves, fig tree, fig bark. Like it's, you know, more that way. And I feel like this is this perfect mix in between and it's great. Sam liked this one a lot as well and he doesn't like fig. He doesn't like Te Matcha, the new one from Le Labo, which is also fig heavy. So if you like fig scents, please check it out. I will be having a fig video coming. I'm telling you, I'm gonna do a fall fig or like cold weather fig video because I just love fig scents. So if you like fig scents, definitely check this one out. I think it's just this perfect middle ground. It's not too sweet, but you're still getting a bit of that green, 
kind of woody, um, not too sickly syrupy fig going on. Absolutely stunning. One of the ones I wanna get a full bottle of, like for sure. Like for sure I'm getting a bottle of that one. So starting off strong, I was actually pretty happy smelling these um, because even the ones that I don't particularly want to buy were still a fun experience smelling. They definitely tell a story, um, which I'm not gonna be reading the story for each one. I'll, I'll save that for you guys. Also, I'd make this video 10 times longer. But I really like this brand because the scents are unique, but not so unique that it's not like fun. It's again, kind of a perfect middle ground of not being too niche where, you know, you really have to be in the fragrance world and have like a really sophisticated or experienced nose to enjoy them. But I do find them, you know, more unique and more uh, different than what you maybe would smell at Sephora type of thing. Next, randomly, this is one called Telegramma. Oh yeah, okay. This one definitely, like initially, I get this kind of syrupy smell from this. It's definitely sweet. Yeah, but there, it's like a sweet um, syrup, something about it. It's interesting because the notes on this are talc, lavender absolute, black pepper, teak, amorous, vanilla powder, and fresh linens. I pick up a lot on that vanilla powder. I, I don't smell too much of the black pepper. It's not super spicy or even the lavender. It's like interesting. I would have never guessed all those things because for me, what's so strong is just, yeah, like a sweet syrupy type of smell. But maybe somehow the vanilla powder mixed with like something that's like a fresh linen or something more fresh is like somehow creating that. I thought this one was interesting. Definitely not my personal favorite, but I feel like this is kind of the take on like a barbershop type scent because I think this has to do with like kind of their shaving type products. And I do wanna say that definitely with these ones I found like as they dry down, they do kind of change. So what you smell in the opening isn't necessarily what you're gonna get as it dries down. And I haven't smelled these all on the skin yet. I just got them. So there is that, just keep that in mind. But these are like more my initial yet not first impression thoughts. Next is O Unknown. This one is so interesting. Oh my gosh. I've heard people describe it smells like makeup-y and this is definitely a makeup-y type of perfume. So if you like that kind of powdery, almost like lipstick smell, that's what this smells like to me. This has notes of black tea. This is gonna be hard for me. Lapsang, Suchong tincture, orris butter, Kyoto moss, musk balsam, sandalwood, and then it just has question marks <laughs> as the, uh, the imaginary note. This smells very much like a waxy lipstick or I get more of almost like a crayon smell. But then the thing is, I thought I would maybe not like that. And I'm telling you that is very strong to my nose. Like, whoa, it smells like, like literal makeup. But there is this musk, and I think it's that musk balsam that comes through at the end and I really love that smell. That smell reminds me of something that is similar, not exact, but a similar musky scent to me as like Glossier U or like the Caudalie um, Te Devon scent that I really like. So um, yeah, I don't know. It's so interesting, but it is very heavily lipstick and makeup at first. If you like those, I know there's one from Juliet Has a Gun that's also quite makeup-y. But yeah, there's something kind of comforting about that. I don't know if I want to wear that scent, but it's definitely a makeup -y scent. Okay, probably the number one scent I wanted to try and like I had to stop myself from blind buying a bottle of this because that's how much I wanted it. This is a whiff of waffle cone, which is actually in collaboration with Salt and Straw. So they like teamed up to make this fragrance. And this one is definitely gourmand and like vanilla and ice cream. And I've been just so into the sweet scents that this was the one that I was like, I think I'll like the most. Like I love this one. I'm so excited to try it. And I do like it. It's in this kind of in between of like, I do really like it and I think it's gonna grow on me, but initially I was like, oh, I don't love it as much as I thought. This has notes of vanilla, heavy cream, salted caramel, amorous, or geet, Saigon cinnamon, and ice cream shop. <laughs> I definitely get the vanilla, I get the salted caramel. I almost get like, it does smell like melted ice cream to me. Like I totally, totally get that. I do get a bit of like warm waffle cone as well. Like it smells like an ice cream shop, but there is a bit of like a syrupy smell as well well to this one. And that's the one thing that I was like, oh, I wish it didn't quite have this syrup. But I do find with this one, as it dries down, that syrup note kind of calms down and it does become even like warmer and even more like the actual waffle cone, you know, smell. So I think this is one that I definitely want to test this tester on my skin, keep smelling it, see if it's something that grows on me a little bit more. And then I become like obsessed with it, but not 
one that I'm initially going to buy from, you know, smelling them right now. It might be one I add later, but definitely super sweet. If you love those gourmands, you love those vanillas, like you want something like that and you want something more realistic to like food smelling, this is definitely the one you want to try. It just smells like you're in an ice cream shop. It's so, it's so cool. Mm, I do like it. It's like, again, I'm, I'm now coming back to it like a third or fourth time and I like it more than I initially did. I think it's one of those ones I had a lot of expectations on. <laughs> Next we have the Cobra and the Canary. Oh, I like, I like this one. This one is like leather, kind of spicy, kind of, uh, to me, it's a little aromatic. Mm, it's kind of masculine, but I think anyone could wear them. I think all these are like meant to be unisex, but obviously all fragrance, wear whatever the hell you want. So the notes on this one are lemon, orris, tobacco flowers, leather, hay fields, and asphalt. I like this one. I, I find that to me, there's something kind of spicy. I don't really see that here. Maybe it's something like acidic with that lemon mixed with the tobacco mixed with like this kind of almost tar and leather that comes comes out somehow a little spicy to me, but I just think this one's kind of comforting. I like a leather note though, I'm realizing. I don't like every leather note, but I find that alluring. And if I'm gonna go deeper with a fragrance, I do find leather to be a note that is like a good one for me to, to smell. I really like that and I love it even more as it dries down. When we were testing it yesterday, that's what I, I was noticing is that, you know, initially I was like, oh, that's pretty good. But then when I'd go back to it, I'm like, ooh, I really like that now. Like I really like the way that leather kind of, is. That's a good one. I definitely think that's a good one too for a more masculine leaning scent. And that one to me kind of goes with the whiff of waffle cone where I'm not gonna buy it initially, but I could see myself maybe at some point buying that one. It's quite nice. Okay, this one is another one that is leather as well. This is called Slow Explosions. And this is saffron, rose absolute, leather, apple, benzoin, cashmere, and apora night market. I can smell the leather in it, but I definitely smell like the rose and to me the apple, it's almost like this rose apple jam or something or like apple juice with roses, a rose jam. I don't know, that's what I get mixed with the leather. Yeah, I just pick up on a lot of apple juice. I don't know why, like a, <laughs> a rosy apple juice leather. I find it starts like, um, you know, evening out a little bit to my nose as it dries down. But there's also almost something kind of medicinal at the very end to me, like on that last Last bit of the sniff. This is not my favorite. I definitely prefer how the leather sits in the last one, the Cobra and the Canary, as opposed to this, but Sam is the opposite. Sam liked this one over that one. So um, I definitely think that a lot of people like this. I know rose and leather tend to go together in scents a lot and I get it. It's just not my particular, it's just not my favorite. I, I can still appreciate it. There's something about this though that kind of reminds me because I just get that apple, I feel like quite strong. I don't know. Sam said he couldn't really pick up on that much. So I don't know why I get apple a lot from this, but it reminds me in, in some ways of the way that I sometimes smell apple in Angel Share as well as apple in um, Apple Brandy from Killian. So if those are some of your favorite scents, I'd be interested to know if you've smelled this, if you kind of get that link or it would be something that maybe I suggest, like they don't smell the same, they're not dupes. I'm just saying, I don't know, the apple note to me is similar as it is in those perfumes. So that is slow explosions. Next, let's try whispered myth. Myths, that was so hard to say. Oh, this one's so interesting. This one has um, something kind of, I guess, musky, or like woody or kind of like damp or something, dusty, I don't know, at the beginning. But then this end note is so sweet to me. It's like this artificially sweet end note that, um, you know, I smell at the very end. <laughs> of this as I sniff it. This one's just so interesting. This has notes of natural Cambodian oud, cantaloupe, maybe it's that cantaloupe coming through or the honey. There's also honey in this. There's cedarwood, muskdana, and salvage shipwreck. That's where you're getting almost something kind of like dank in here. It is a very interesting smell. I feel like I haven't quite smelled something like this. It kind of like, rattles my brain. It has this whole story Sam and I read yesterday about someone who like works at the Louvre and he's like looking at the paintings, wondering about them, but then he like finds himself. Like, I don't know, it's very, very fun. I just think this brand does fun stuff, but also like the scents are good. Definitely an interesting smell. I definitely pick up on, yeah, the shipwreck. <laughs> I pick up on that wood, the oud. It's very woody and kind of like a dusty dry wood at the beginning, but then that honey and cantaloupe, I think that's what's coming through at the end and it definitely gives it a bit of sweet 
sweetness there. Very, very interesting one. Another one of the scents that I enjoyed, but I don't know if I'll pick up. This is called Every Storm a Serenade. And this one just has a very cooling effect. Like it just smells like outdoor air to me. It smells like when I sniff it, I almost smell cold. Like it almost feels cold when I smell this one. This has notes of Danish spruce, eucalyptus, vetiver, calone. I think that's maybe how you say that. Ambergris and Baltic sea mist. There's definitely something, um, you know, cold about this. I'm sure that's a bit of that eucalyptus, but then the spruce in here is giving me like outdoor vibes for sure. Same with the vetiver. Um, and then, you know, that imaginary note of Baltic sea mist, you're definitely getting something kind of like the ocean is near, it's a colder sea, but it's not salty and it doesn't smell like marine, like overall to me, it doesn't smell overly beachy or overly, yeah, aquatic or marine-like. And I actually like that. It smells more to me like cold forest air with a tinge of, of ocean salt or something, but not too much. I, I, I enjoy this one a lot. It's very light. I also like that. I feel like this could easily be a fragrance that is very overpowering, but instead it just has a nice lightness to it as well, which keeps it kind of um, in the air and, and kind of breezy. That's probably um, and precisely my sixth favorite of the ones that I tried. <laughs> Let's talk about the newest scent that's come out from them. This is called Fox in the Flower Bed. I had a feeling I wouldn't like this one. I had a feeling it was going to be quite floral and it definitely is. So if you're into your florals, you want like pretty classic floral scent. This is the one you wanna go for. Oh yeah, it's just very, it's very strong. It's just not my, my, my thing. This has jasmine, tulips, frankincense, wildflower honey, pink peppercorns, silver thistle, and alpine air. It's a very um, fresh and kind of clean floral scent, um, which are the two Two scents I probably gravitate, or areas of scent I gravitate to the least, especially currently. I like something sweet. I like something woody. Um, and so if like clean and woody are paired together, I still might like it. Or if like fruity or sweet and floral are paired together, I still might like it. But for clean and floral, to me to be paired together, not quite my favorite scent. So yeah, that one's interesting. Let's talk about another one I love, another one that I am planning on getting the full bottle of. I'm telling you, out of the four scents that I'm like, I want to try those, three of them I'm for sure buying, and one of them I'm like on the fence and probably or maybe will buy later. I had a pretty good idea. Oh, okay, so this is St. Julep. This one, the more I smell it, the more I like it. This has notes of sweet mint, tangerine, southern magnolia, bourbon, Grisalva and sugar cube. Oh, but you know what's so amazing about this scent is that the mint that's in here, because it's sweet, it's not too punchy. The tangerine that's in here isn't too tangy. And I really like that about it because it keeps this very airy quality about it. And I, I'm gonna go out on a ledge here. I'm gonna say to me and my nose, although this is not Baccarat, I feel like this is a like mint julep version, a summery kind of citrusy version of Baccarat. Like the way that the sugar and the sweetness is done in this, the way that this fragrance just is, it's light and airy, like it has this airy quality to it, kind of like how the sweetness in Baccarat is to me, but then it does have a little bit of that mint, a little bit of that tangerine, and so there's something about it. It's still fresh though. I, it's so good. I really love this. It is a light scent. I did wear it once to try it out, and I feel like, I don't know how the, the lasting power on this is going to be, but I also didn't get the opportunity to really like over spray myself like I like to do, but definitely one I am so excited to get. And I feel like really happy about this because I easily think like with this kind of, I feel like mint julep themed one, it easily could have been really syrupy, overly sweet, overly pungent in certain areas. And I just love how airy and light it is. It's so good. I really love that one. And I am planning on getting a bottle of it. <laughs> Next is a scent I actually really like more than I thought I would. This is called the Soft Lawn and it has like a, the amount imaginary note of tennis balls, but it also has linden blossom, grapefruit, laurel and ivy leaves, vetiver and oak moss. And I thought that this one might be a little too green for me, maybe a little scratchy almost or something like just too much, but it's very, it's a very nice green scent. There's still a bit of sweetness in this, but again, not overly sweet and it's not too heavy. Sometimes with like ones that are like too grassy, too green, they make my nose itch and I don't get that type of like sensation from this one. I really think it's a quite a nice one, especially if you like something more in the floral realm, um, but you don't want something too floral. I think this one's nice. I think this is just a really great, more clean green with some floral 
and slightly sweet scent. This one's very, very nice. I could also see that being a nice like candle or body wash or hand soap or something like that as well. Let's do it. Let's finally talk about A City on Fire because this one is probably one of the most, uh, I think, I don't know if it's unique, but it's a, it's a thing, it's a thing. <laughs> Because this is a smoky mofo for sure. Oh yeah, and this is smoky in a different way. I think I love um, uh, By the Fireplace by Replica, but I find that that campfire type of smoke is very, it's realistic to me. I find it very realistic, but then it has that marshmallow, that sweetness to kind of balance it. And I do find that over time, that kind of smokiness dies away. The sweetness kind of comes and envelops it. It's so great. I love that scent. So I was excited to smell this one, but I do find that this, ooh, the smokiness on this one has a savory uh, moment. To me, <laughs> I call this burnt hot dog skin. <laughs> That's just like the way that I smell it or almost like a tang, like a barbecue sauce smokiness to it. Um, and so it, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot. I find on the dry down that does die down, kind of like with the other smoky scent and it does become better. But again, it's just, this doesn't have a, a sweetness behind this perfume to um, kind of counteract that faster. And, a, and I do feel like it just has a tang to it. So this is not for the light of heart. If you love smoky scents, I mean, try it. I think it's so fun to smell this and that this exists, but I don't know, Sam likes it. And Sam was like, if you wore like one spray, but then maybe layer it or like, you know, you gotta be careful with this one, and I agree. This has Cade Oil, Spikenard, Cardamom, Clear Wood, Dark Berries, Labdanum, and Burnt Match. <laughs> it's it's a lot, um, but even right now, that opening has that tang. It's it's dying down, especially as I continue to smell it. I feel like my nose gets used to the tang, so I don't. It's not so like in my face as much. And I do smell like the darker berries, almost like a juniper behind there or something. It, it smells like a forest. It smells like a, a burning forest, but also someone is having a barbecue in this forest <laughs> to me. Very very interesting one. Okay, we have three more. I feel like I worked through these decently fast for having 16 to smell. Next, this is one I thought I would really enjoy and I really don't, I don't like it nearly as much as I thought I would. This one's called Sun Drunk. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, the opening on this, strong plastic note. Like you're opening um, plastic blow up furniture or a beach ball, <laughs> which this is more of a beachy scent. Maybe that's what they're going for, I don't know. But then as that dies away, you do smell this orange note. Um, um, quite quite strong. It smells like orange plastic or something like literally a plastic orange. <laughs> but I find on the dry down the plastic goes completely away, and then you're just left with kind of a an an orangey scent. So this has notes of neroli, rhubarb, honeysuckle, rose water, orange zest, and first kiss. I don't mind plastic notes necessarily, or like the makeup note. I find that baccarat as well as cloud have a bit of a medical, uh, you know, something about them smells a little plasticky, but this one's definitely a different, a different plastic. I think it's just something about the way maybe the honeysuckle in here mixed with the orange. It's just a little different, not something I quite enjoy. It's not as sweet as I thought, um, which is just interesting. Just a lot of orange, and I don't know why I didn't think that it would be that orangey. I thought it'd be more beachy, but it's more bright and summery, but maybe not like, traditionally beachy. Next, let's do Memoirs of a Trespasser. This one is so funny. Sam and I have like our perfect little explanation of what we think this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> every time. I thought maybe I wouldn't smell it, but no, I do. This one, I'll tell you the notes first. This has notes of Madagascar vanilla, Gayak wood, myrrh, bezoin resin, ambrette seeds, and oak barrels. So there is this like vanilla and sweetness coming through, but lots of woods. And so what I get from this and what we got, it's like it literally smells like the skin of a potato. <laughs> Like, you know the way a potato smells, but like that kind of skin portion, like you have a baked potato, but you're kind of eating or smelling the skin of that baked potato mixed with vanilla, mixed with something sweet at the end. But it's like giving you dry potato skin for sure. A hundred percent, it's potato. It's not even bad though. We were both saying that yesterday. We were like, I don't hate it, but that is what it is. <laughs> and that is what it is. It has like this vanilla note at the end. It's almost like, marshmallows have been put on this potato skin. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. I definitely am getting a very dry kind of dirt or wood, uh, you know, scent, which I, I like scents like that. But then there's this con, like, you know, it overtakes this, the vanilla finally comes in and then clears that out and you're like, oh, sweet vanilla, okay. Uh, <laughs> very different scents going on. <laughs> it's just, 
potato skin. I'm gonna save one of the best for last. So next we'll go into Falling Into the Sea. This is one of those kind of marine aquatic scents, but it's very nice. I, I'm learning I don't always love those, uh, again, because they tend to be a little bit clean. I find a salt note in a fragrance to be maybe something I question, and I find a lot of marine or aquatic scents have something salty about them. But this one's very good because it has this citrus. It's really, I like this one a lot, actually. It's also the lychee, lychee. I have a lot of Australian friends, and I know they say it one way, and, and then it just confuses me as to how we say it. Anyway, this has notes of lemon, bergamot, grapefruit, lychee, that's how I think how they say it. I think we say lychee. Anyway, whatever, tropical flowers and warm sand. And I find in this time that like lychee in here gives it a tang along with the other citruses, but then I do get something kind of warm and I, I don't wanna say creamy, but there's something about that end, definitely a little bit tropical, like it is a bit of a daiquiri, but not overly sweet. Again, not overly syrupy. It's still really bright. It's a really nice one. This is probably my seventh favorite. Yeah, probably my seventh, hmm. Favorite. I like this one. This is definitely in a like, ooh, I like that. I don't know if I want a bottle, but I, I enjoy it. It smells very nice. I think it'd be a great, bright, fresh scent for summer that isn't too clean though. Still has some nice fruitiness, just the tiniest bit of sweet. Mm, very good. And not just like a, a classic citrus. It's a very good one. I enjoy it. But let's finish it off with one of my favorites and the third bottle that I am planning on getting. Cape Heartache. This was another one that I like just knew. Like I need to smell that because I just think I'm gonna love it. And uh, I do, spoiler. The notes on this, okay, Douglas fir, yes. Pine resin, yes. Western hemlock, I'm intrigued. Vanilla leaf, strawberry. I really love strawberry and fragrances, again, except for Burberry Her. Oh, that's just like the worst one. This has old growth and mountain fog. That just sounds like a dream to me, man. I just, I love the entire description of that. And we were talking about this and I feel like this is, if I had to compare it to another fragrance, I feel like this is autumn vibes with strawberry. <laughs> it is like a, a more sweet, um, you know, I smell that strawberry for sure. There's also, like it said, the vanilla leaf, but it, it has this definite wood. It smells like being outside in the forest to me. It smells like the weather is getting cold. There's something, uh, uh, there is a bit more, I feel like in this one, as opposed to autumn woods, you, you know, the leaves are dying. They're, they're golden in that one. And I feel like in this forest, although the air is cold, there's still a dampness, you know, like it, there's still a dampness. It's not like drying out. It's not dry wood but it, it does smell very woody. And the strawberry, there's almost like a dirt. I can almost like smell the soil. It's like rich. I really love this one. Sam really loves this one. This is, I think, his favorite by far. Just good. Oh, it's just a really, really good one. Again, quite unique, you know, even though I can find that, that comparison in some ways to Autumn Vibes. I find a lot of these to be very unique, and yet I still think that a lot of people would enjoy smelling them. They're not so unique that people would be like, what? Because I, olfactive, if you you guys don't know olfactive sub scent subscription i have a code down below if you want to sign up but they do niche fragrances oh my gosh this last month i got two from um a brand i can't remember the name but very unique fragrances and, you know and they're touted as that but unique in a way that's like <laughs> interesting this is a story and this is a journey and you're definitely taking me there you're definitely telling this story but damn i don't know if i want to wear this i'm not sure about that <laughs> i i love having this as this little vial but as a bottle definitely not these are unique and i find fun but still something mass appealing you know so i think that's like a hard balance to strike okay let me move over all right guys i'm gonna leave it here my camera battery is dying as we speak but those are my thoughts on the entire range of the imaginary author's scents i really have enjoyed my experience so far. I mean, I purchased all this stuff myself. So these are just all my, my thoughts. I definitely want to pick up those three bottles, Cape Heartache, Yesterday Haze, and St. Julep. Definitely my top three. But like you guys were hearing me say, I really, you know, a whiff of waffle cones definitely uh, growing on me. I really like Canary and the Cobra. I really liked Falling Into the Sea, the Serenade of a Storm or whatever. <laughs> I liked that one. And the other ones have been so fun to to smell even if I don't find them to be something I wanna wear. So I'd love to know any of your thoughts on imaginary authors, which scents are your favorites? Have you tried the brand before? Have you heard of them before? Cause I feel like I've only heard about this mostly through the fragrance community. So I'd love to know any of your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're doing well and I will see you with a video hopefully tomorrow. Okay, goodbye guys.